Welcome back. I'm assuming that if you're still here, then you took that uh, deep dive with me. I want to welcome uh, the entire Harvard academic community to this exercise uh, that we've been engaged in. Um, before we go any further, I do want to uh, point out uh, something about life or board preparation and what my job uh, requires. When I sit down with an inmate who's preparing for the board, um, I sort of have to have to put myself in the position of society in order to be able to confront him on the issues that have to be confronted. So this is the part of the exercise uh, that is referred to as the confrontation, right? And so that's where the specialist has to really give you society's perspective of what it is that you did and what it is that you know, is expected uh, from you at this point. Again, we're dealing with, I deal with heinous crimes committed a long time ago. Um, for that, I will give you um, an example. Uh, about a little over 10 years ago, I had a client who was a member of the Charles Manson uh, murderous cult, right? But he was very young when he was in, got involved in these guys, but now he's an old man and he was coming up uh, for the board and he needed uh, expert assistance. And so he retained my services. And uh, like most of my clients, he was prepared uh, when he went before the board and he was indeed found suitable uh, by the board. In fact, I believe he was the only one of all of the people who were involved in that Manson, Charles Manson murderous cult uh, that was uh, uh, here in uh, California uh, back in the uh, early 70s. It's a very, very famous uh, Okay, some suggest that it might be California's most famous um, uh, criminal case. Uh, right up there with OJ, right? Uh, but this person was up for parole maybe 40 years after, after the, uh, the crimes. But uh, after I read his paperwork, I saw that he was really a minor player. And the truth is that he was a very young person uh, who got caught up and who was vulnerable, really, uh, to um, a charismatic you know, cult leader, Charles Manson. And so, you know, we've seen that kind of thing before. We know what it looks like when young people are caught up in the frenzy of the, you know, the cult of personality. And essentially that's what happened. And so he got caught up in that, but here we are 40 years later and he's coming up for the board. So I read everything and we're sitting down and we're about to do a mock hearing. And I say, to, I ask him the obvious question, which was, how did you get, a, how did you get caught up with these with these guys, you know, a guy like you, you know, how did that happen? And he says to me, he answers me in this way. Well, when I met Charlie and the family, I'll tell you. And he starts waxing nostalgic about Charlie and the family. So, of course, I immediately stopped him and informed him that at no point will it be acceptable for him to refer to Charles Manson as fucking Charlie, right? You make him sound like he's your long lost uncle or something like that, that you can't get, you can't wait to get back to him or something like that. Hmm? You make it sound like it was a walk in the park. You make it sound like it was Charlie in the chocolate factory or something like that. Let's get something straight. You guys were a murderous cult, number one. Number two, the people that you killed those people were families. Don't ever get that mixed up, right? And that guy, Charlie, that you refer to, make sure it's the last damn time you refer to that guy as Charlie in my presence. Do you understand that? All right, let's get going. And I had to have, to have that conversation with him because the way he remembered it and the way society wants him to deliver it are two different things. Nobody wants to hear anything about Charlie and the family, right? Period. So... Uh, when it comes to this case, I have to tell you uh, that I have to assume the position and assume the role of really representing universal academia because it is universal academia that has a serious question about the pedagogical program of Harvard University. They're academic questions. There are questions that go to the academic legitimacy of a Harvard degree of a Harvard uh, education, so-called education, right? Because if you don't agree or you don't adhere to universal 
knowledge, universal precepts, pedagogical precepts and principles and concepts. How in the world are you a university? How in the world are you, do you qualify as a true university or a university in the truest sense of the term, right? A university indicates that it's, it's an institution for universal knowledge that imparts universal knowledge, like the heliocentric uh, reality, like uh, Newton's gravity, all right? The, 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 how that works, right? What that's about, right? The principles surrounding it. Also, the multicultural nature of humanity. If a university has white and black, pseudo-scientific replacements for actual cultural identity at the on the application to get into school that's a safe indication that entire school the program of the entire institution is impugned because everybody knows that white and black are not legitimate replacements for cultural identity in the midst of a multicultural society in fact it's pseudoscience right but the one thing we can count on is that all 370,000 uh, members of the Harvard academic community has been trained and indoctrinated to accept white as a legitimate replacement for cultural identity in the midst of a multicultural society. Not only is that social insanity, but it's academic malpractice, right? And it does not comport with universal academia. So what we have discovered is that uh, Harvard University, college at first, university now, is the academic birthplace of pseudoscience. Oh yeah, self-identified white people, not white people, not so-called white people. Self-identified white people are the only human beings on earth and who have ever existed, who identify themselves socially, culturally, and politically based on the distinct color of their physical bodies to the exclusion of their actual cultural identities, but in the midst of a multicultural society. That's insanity. That's the Lord of the Flies. White and black as so-called racial designations is discredited. It's pseudoscience. So that if you have white and black on the application to get in, you are a pseudoscientific institution. You don't qualify as a, as a university. How can you be? Listen, if your so-called university, it doesn't matter who you are, anywhere, if you're listening in, and you have white and black as replacements for actual cultural identity in the midst of a multicultural society as an academic exercise to determine who you're going to admit into your university, you don't have a university, you have a vocational school. You need to set up a barber college right in the middle of the courtyard and hand out degrees for barbering and cosmetology because you guys are not a university. A university adheres to universal principles, universal concepts, universal precepts like the multicultural nature of humanity. What's with white? What's with black? Harvard University is the academic father of all self-identified white people. That's right. That's right. And now that academic Frankenstein's monster is out of control. People want the government or church to do something about it. But it's really not a political or a spiritual issue. It's an academic issue. Harvard put its academic imprimatur, right? Imprimator, right? On bullshit. Harvard put its academic imprimator on bullshit, on race science, right? The 20th century was said to be the uh, century where the brain trust of eugenics was located at Harvard University. Eugenics? Are you kidding? Where do they go? There's, they have to still be here. Even though it's not a popular thing to talk about eugenics and white superiority and all of that, Harvard has never, ever renounce the use of white as a replacement for cultural identity, right? Harvard has never denounced, disavowed the use of body color designations as a replacement for cultural identity or other culturally obfuscating terms to obscure cultural identity. 
The idea that English Americans are no longer English Americans, they're just white, is insane. The idea that German Americans are no longer Germans, they're just white, is insane. The idea that Irish Americans or Norwegians or Swedes or Russians or whomever else are now just white by virtue of the fact that they moved to the United States is academic insanity. But Harvard University is the birthplace of that madness. Harvard University, Harvard College is the birthplace of academically recognizing white and black as legitimate substitutes for cultural identity in the midst of a multicultural society. That eventually became the, the uh, foundation of all of American academia, of which Harvard is the chief cornerstone, right? So naturally, now that the society over which Harvard presides academically has ground to a halt, now that it's polarized to the extent that they can't even agree on truth, they can't even agree on facts, everybody in universal academia is looking toward Harvard University and saying, hey, you better slay that Frankenstein's giant, that Frankenstein's monster you have, right? You better slay, you better, you better bring that to heel. You better tell them, you need to tell them that white's not real, that white is not a legitimate replacement for cultural identity. You need to tell them, search out your last name, find out what culture you are, because culture is the coin of the realm in a multicultural civilization. You need to tell them. Tell them that white and race and all of that, race science, all of that was pseudoscience and that you should have never put it out. And that once you did put it out and you found out that it was a falsehood, you should have retracted it. It should be the academic duty of all, everyone in the Harvard academic community to make it very clear that white and black chess piece color designations are not racial categories. That's pseudoscience. White and black as, as replacements, as substitutes for cultural identity is a recipe for disaster. And I'm a chess player. I know if you superimpose black and white upon an entire society of people, you're going to end up with a stalemate. You're not going to have a, a checkmate either way. Why? Because humans are far too complex to be reduced to chess piece color designations and body color designations. That's insanity, right? In the spirit of full disclosure, I should tell you, I was raised uh, in the Honolulu public school system, right? Uh, Hawaiian academia, right? Hawaiian kingdom academia. You've heard about that, right? Well, in Hawaii, white and black is considered insane, right? White and black as replacements for cultural identity are academically insane. They will laugh at you calling yourself some body color designation. Well, I'm just dark tan. People just look at you like you're crazy. Well, I'm just black. They'll look at you like you're nuts. I'm white. Huh? What? What's that? Are you German? Right? Are you Scottish? Are you English? What are you? What makes you think that the your body color or your body color designation serves as a replacement for who and what you are culturally? What makes you think you can come into an environment and announce your body color designation and that somehow is your ticket inside, right? I mean, look at the county of Los Angeles, just for an example, just to show you how and why people are attacking the pseudoscience that Harvard University is responsible for and why people want Harvard University to retract that madness, right? In the county of Los Angeles, over 140 different cultures of people, but everyone knows there are less than a dozen different body colors in the human uh, spectrum. Right? So what that means is that here in the county, more than a dozen different cultures of people are going to share a common body color. So you can't be in the county of Los Angeles announcing yourself according to your body color designation because it doesn't mean anything here. Right? White means nothing here. Black means nothing here. People want you to disaggregate those broad terms and to tell us exactly who you are. This is the multicultural capital of the human race. If nowhere else... Everyone here understands that there is only one race and it's multicultural. But if your university, so-called university, does not acknowledge that universal truth, how in the world can it qualify as a university in the minds of universal academia? It's nothing more than a vocational school. You might as well put a beauty college right there in the courtyard of the university.
and hand out four-year degrees for going to beauty college. Nobody cares if the beauty college instructor believes that the earth is in the middle of the universe. But everybody cares if the astronomy professor at the university is teaching that the earth is in the middle of the universe. Right? Nobody wants to hear any professor talk in terms of white and black post-2020. It's ridiculous. Listen, COVID-19 flattened the world. It flattened the world in a way that Tom Friedman didn't even point out. Right? Who knew that universal academia would replace American academia and that American academia as we have known it would die? Who knew? Who knew that for the first time in centuries, classroom instruction would be disrupted indefinitely? But it happened at a time when everyone was getting their information and doing everything on their device anyway. So universal academia went from the classroom to the device. When that happened, it exposed classroom instruction for what it was. It exposed everything had to come out of the classrooms, you see. Everything had to be put on the, onto the device in order to be accessed. And when that happened, we saw that American academia is far short of universal academia when it comes to just basic fundamental principles of pedagogy. Just fundamental things like, you know, the, uh, the multicultural reality of humanity, right? The fact that you would have white and black on the application. Listen, what you're essentially asking students to do is to suspend reason to gain entry into the halls of reason. That's insane. So nobody's going for that. Not one more day. Any universe, so-called university, which includes Harvard, right, who still has white and black on the application post-2020 is nothing more than a vocational school. They should strip the word university off because they are anything but a university. They reject universal knowledge. They reject things like the sun being in the center of the universe. They reject things like gravity. They reject things like the multicultural nature of humanity. For them, humans are white and black and other obscure, culturally obfusc obfuscating uh, uh, terms, right? But never what they really are, right? They never want to disaggregate. The English Americans, the primary propagators of this madness, never wanted to be English Americans. They still don't want to be English Americans. But guess what? There will be cultural accountability in this civilization, even if people have to search your last name on their device to find out the exact village that you came from. But no more. I don't know what I am. I'm just white. No more of that. You will be accountable to your culture and you will be held accountable to your culture. The idea that a white police officer can kill people and not be held culturally accountable is insane, right? From now on, people are going to search his last name, find out where he is and hold him culturally accountable. That's right. Timothy Lohman needs to be held culturally accountable. That German American police officer murdered a child in broad daylight. That's right. That's right. The McMichaels need to be held culturally accountable. Right. Those two Irishmen murdered a man in cold blood. That's right. That guy, Officer Slager down there who shot Walter Scott in the back, needs to be held accountable. That English-American officer murdered a man. Right? No more anonymity, though. And so cultural anonymity in the midst of a multicultural society is social insanity. It's the Lord of the Flies. Right? Truthfully, right? people could, could, could trace all of the ills of this society right back to the pedestal of John Harvard's statue. What's with the white stuff, bro? What's with this black stuff? You, listen, if anything, Harvard University needs to stand up. Somebody, some president, the president of the university, the president of the alumni association, the president of the student body, and tell so-called whites and blacks that white and black as replacements for cultural identity was an academic fraud. It was a mistake. It was an error. It should have never been done. And it must be retracted, right? The idea that you could unleash a Frankenstein's monster into the world and not accept responsibility for disabusing them of, that, of the notion that white is real, that white is an acceptable uh, you know, replacement for cultural identity in the midst of a multicultural society, or even black, Right? Frankenstein's bride, right? The codependent, you know, side of, of this narcissistic perspective, this narcissistic identity based on body color designation of all things, right? 
And you got people jumping in on it. Well, if you're white, then I'm black with a PhD from Harvard talking white and black pseudoscience in the name of high education. Mm -mm. What it appears to me based on the record is that what Harvard does is attract the best and the brightest and then dumb them down. Oh yeah, anytime I graduate from a university and I come away thinking of humans as being white and or black, okay, I've been not educated, I've been indoctrinated, right? That's not education, right? That's anything but, that's a academic cult of color. That's what that is, right? I would take no pride in that. In fact, from this point forward, any university that's doing that mess, that's you know grounded in that pseudoscience is gonna be outed for what it really is, right? So everyone expects for Harvard University, somebody at Harvard to stand up and say, you know what? That was a mistake. What we did was a mistake. What we taught was a mistake. Uh, the idea that white is real is a mistake. The idea that black is real is a, you know, was a replacement for cultural identity is a mistake, right? I also think that the uh, Harvard University has to come clean with so-called black people, right? Maybe it's important that now is a good time for you to tell them that you descendants of enslaved Africans of the United States are actually not a minority here. The truth is that you guys are the largest culture of people in the land. That's right. You outnumber the Germans here. You outnumber the English here. You outnumber the Irish here. You outnumber the Mexicans here. That's right. We had to create a racial, so-called, a new category to team up, to outnumber you, to make you think of yourself as a minority. But the truth is you're not a minority. And But because we have eliminated cultural accountability as a part of our pedagogical program, we don't have to acknowledge the fact that you're the largest culture of people here. In fact, we can brainwash you into thinking of yourself as a 13% minority. That's right. Because we can get you thinking in terms of what we made up. Race. It's fake. It's fake. It's not even real. There's only one race. And it's multicultural. All right. So look, I'm 